Thank you and God bless you. Thank you. And we are thankful to be here in Baton Rouge today. Yeah. Have you been to Baton Rouge before? First time. Been through it. Yeah, how do you like Baton Rouge so far? I look good. <laughs> look good. Well, uh, tell, me, tell me a little bit, tell all of us a little bit about uh, your growing up in Calhoun County, Mississippi. Where is Calhoun County? Well, Calhoun County is... If you find it going down number nine south of Memphis, and it's, it's back east, in the northeast from here. It's a pretty large county adjoined by Grenada County. And that's why I was born in Calhoun County, just about a mile across the line from, out of Gren from Grenada County. I was raised up on a farm. I farmed all of my life. Plied mules, hold cotton, pick cotton, did all that. I ain't nothing but a country boy. Yeah. I did all that, and I was running a chainsaw, cutting timber for about 35 years. And I also have uh, worked from sun up to sun down for 50 cents per day. Started making big money. Five dollars per day. Five days a week, I had $30. I thought I was rich. But I should have known I wasn't rich. <laughs> so I'm glad to be out trying to do something to help others. But we, we could be going on just trying to do on our own, but you got to try to help other people in order to make it through the world. This world wasn't made all in one day, but, you know, we got to... We got to try to help people, not downhearted. What got you uh, interested in music? Well, I had a first cousin. He played, he played guitar and harmonicas, and some people call him Blood. We call it, I call it a fiddle or that bow. He plays music, and he sold Garden Seed and got a guitar. The Garden Seed pack one, but Four dollars for pack, and he had to pay extra three dollars to receive the guitar through the mail route. Cause like see, back, see his robot catalog. Yeah, yeah. I think that's where he ordered it from. I'm not sure. <laughs> it might have been a water field. I don't know. <laughs> but anyway, he ordered the guitar, and me and his baby brother, we we didn't have no post office thing, but just on the rural route. So we had to go out there. We had, the mailbox and picked up the guitar. We thought we'd had a 2,000-ton pound log or something. We carried by one end, I carried by the other. We got to the house, he told us, that, I don't want you boys messing with my guitar. Well, he'd go off, so he could go off and to see his girl, go off coating or whatever you might call it. And when he'd leave, we'd grab the guitar and be wailing and bamming on it. And, he came in one evening, and we were, oh, we was having a party. We was getting away. We was playing that guitar. We had the strings doing the talking. Of, and I, I, we, we was doing the talking and the strings doing the walking. He said, I told you all not to, not to listen to my guitar. We told him you did. And this, uh, this is what he gave to us. He said, well, I tell you what, I ain't going to say nothing else to y'all about playing my guitar, you're playing better than I am. So that's where I got started playing. Now you mentioned, uh, <clears throat> you mentioned being out there with logs and out in the woods. You, you did a lot of sawmill work, didn't you? Oh yeah, I did a lot of sawmill work. I had to go to cage, set blocks, sitting up on to cut the lumber on, inch and a half or two inch of wood. And then I run a chainsaw cutting timber, about 35 years. Throw the trees down and top them. They hold them long, long living on the truck. And, and I also turn low for the soldier at the mill, chip the saw. That was a dangerous job. I almost, I almost have got my fingers cut. But yeah, I was going to ask you, that's dangerous work. It just, it just happened to tip them. Thank God I still got them. Still can use them. No kidding. I mean, if, if you'd gotten that kind of accident, you wouldn't, yeah. you wouldn't be playing the guitar. I wouldn't be playing it. 
I'd be somewhere all sad and lonely, I guess, but thank God, God let me get out of that dungeon, so that's how I actually got started playing then. Then I went to going out, I got about old, old enough to go out. I went to going out with my first girl, and we played for, for picnics. Such thing as that they have three day picnic out in the wood. I enjoyed that. That's been why I say I'm a country boy. So what what they do at the picnic? They play games and <clears throat> play play ball game, hard ball. And they also did had a stage bit. We play music on they dance. I don't know anybody else know anything about but they, we call it that old rye whiskey, old corn whiskey. Somebody bun you up. They did all that and the, the cooking you, you food. You didn't drink any of the corn whiskey that evening. I wish I'd have thrown back that I done drunk. <laughs> <laughs> don't drink it no more. That stuff will bun you up. <laughs> oh, corn. Some call it wire cat. They call it school cat. It had many different names. Mm -hmm. Well, it was tough. Wait, now, <clears throat> excuse me. You're talking about uh, picnic and party. What about church? You, you were a church-going man. Well, yeah, I've been going to church all my life. My mother and I was all raised up in church, and so that, that's what they would talk to me about, going to church every Sunday. Sometimes I didn't go to church. I'd go down to the creek and set up me some hooks, trying to catch some fish. You know, Saturday night, I'd set out hooks and catch. I call them little mud cats, go on Sunday morning and pick them up. But I've always been... Been in church all my life, yeah. and then and sang the blues too. I sang the hillbilly, that's what I call them. Songs such as "On the you by Walking the Floor." You, I used to listen to the Grand Ole Opry, yeah. and I sang songs like that. Mm. And mostly blues. I'm in the blues side. Well, I see you got your guitar with. You. Uh, do you mind giving us a little, just a touch of what your blues style is, or pick up something from your memory that we were talking about? Uh, I don't mind it, but I'm going to say this to I got to get it tuned up. I ain't got it keyed up yet. Because if I get it keyed up, I'll give you a tune. And it's been nice talking with you, too. So I got to key it and get it keyed up, and then I'll give you a number. All right. Well, Abby, still, the two things are running. And ain't no one going my way. One look and there's not nothing wrong. It runs to hold you. It runs to hold you. Oh, well. Ah, ah, ah. Somebody help me with these blues. She's the one that I'm loving. She's the one I do hate to lose. I can't afford to lose. I do hate to lose. Oh, well. I've been gone, gone to the army. I was gone a great long time. When I come back home, my baby still says she's mine. Still says she's mine. Oh, well. Uh -huh. Long. So long and tall. 
along And she went black I went a trip Some folks say she's no good But she's all right She's all right with me She's all right with me Appreciate 
that. Now, uh, I don't mean to put you on the spot, but if we did talk about blues and we talked about gospel, was, was there ever any conflict in, in your mind or in your family about playing blues and gospel? They didn't want to play the blues, they wanted to play the gospel, but my head was, oh, I don't want to play the blues anyway. <laughs> but they, they ain't ready for me to play the gospel. But after I seen, they seen what I was going to do, they said, go ahead and do what you want to do, boy. Yeah. I said, you're awesome. <laughs> so you didn't know preacher got on your back about this? No. Nah, one preacher, I told him I was going out and play the blues. He said, I don't prefer no blues. So my manager them, they thought that would be a good title for that blues recording. I don't prefer no blues. And I was singing blues, and one guy asked me, he said, how come you got on your tape? I don't prefer no blues. I said, I didn't put that on the house, and that's what the pastor said. I know you were singing the blues, and you said you didn't prefer them. I said, that's the pastor's word. We use his word. And then I told him about that. They put his name on the tape, and they holler. Well, you owe me some money. I told him, I don't want nothing. <laughs> he said, I don't prefer no blues. I told him, told me I owe him some money. I said, I don't owe you nothing. Yeah, well, that's that's not a song. That's just that's, that's just an expression. Yeah, that's just a expression he gave. Oh, okay. That's just a word. That's that's not a song. Oh, I see. Yeah. That's just a little bit of jive back in the day. Oh yeah. Okay, so, so let me put you on the spot again. You mentioned hillbilly music. You still play any hillbilly music? Oh yeah. I got you on this club right here. I know you ever heard me. I don't know. Too much different. All this music to me. All this music. Yeah. I love all music. If it's good, I ain't gonna say I love no bad music. Man. <laughs> that bad music makes my ears ache. Yeah, well, you, you spent a good deal of your life playing music and working so hard in the cotton field, yeah. and the sawmills. But it wasn't until recently that you come out and publish and play music. Yeah. Tell me about the out of your home, out of the picnics, out of the church, and, and, and uh, you know, start reaching the public. Yeah, well, I'll let my manager tell you that he'll tell you better than I can. That's the only thing that 
with the, he's the manager. He's my manager. Okay. And he, he, can tell, he, he can tell you all about it. That's how we got started. <laughs> but events funny, though. Yeah. Yeah, greeting. I'm Bensey Varnado. I'm Leo's manager, and I've actually known Leo my entire life. He's 31 years my senior. We're from the same county, and I've always, growing up, I always heard people talk about how well he could play and sing, but because of the time I spent in the service, I never got an opportunity to hear him. So when I retired from the Army in 2011, my son was interested in playing guitar, and I wanted him to learn, uh, hear the old guys before he learned what was in the book. And it took me about two years to get Leo to play for me. And the way I was able to do that was having to play at my 50th birthday party in 2013. And I secretly videotaped him. And I took that video to uh, Fat Possum, Big Legal Mess Records in Oxford, Mississippi. And that, that's the way we was able to get this thing going. And from listening to him, I just wrote up his bio. We got... Uh, Dixie Street there on board as our drummer, and she's been drumming with about two and a half years, and that's the way we was able to get this done. So how, how do you feel about playing out to the public? You've enjoyed it? I feel great. Yeah. Get to meet a lot of different people. Yeah. People that I never thought I'd meet before. Well, the Lord has lined me to meet a lot of people. But well, we've been going a lot of different places. We've been to New Mexico, Canada, just France, Germany, well, we've been halfway around the world. But this time I know this, I tell the people that I hope to be on being, being on all the way around the world, yeah. from coast to coast. Yeah. I enjoy them. How about back in your hometown? Do, do people, are they aware that you're playing the music and getting it out, getting the old blues, gospel, and country out there? Well, oh, yeah, they, they think it's great and everything, but I can't get it on them to go. I got a son. He's learned how to play guitar watching me. His name's Leo West, Jr. I told him to go with us sometime. <laughs> he said, I ain't going to ride no airplane. I told him, you'll never make no money then. Every time I go home and got his paws stuck out wanting money, I said, ride an airplane, you'll make you some money. <laughs> hey, hey, Nick, that you mentioned back home. Uh, on April the 2nd, the town of Bruce, what they done was had a blues and barbecue festival to raise funds for Leo's Blues Trail Marker that's going to be erected in late July. And they're still accepting donations for that uh, Chamber of Commerce in Bruce, Mississippi. So you can go online if you'd like to donate to his Blues Trail Marker. Yeah. So you're going to have your own historic trail marker in your hometown. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's kind of fun. Yeah. Yeah, you come to town, you see me on the picture. Yeah. Leo Bud West. You're not worried people are going to come just knocking on your door? Oh, you yeah. Know? They knock on it sometimes now. I'm like I'm three. Doobie, I go to snow and laugh. 